Today, we get the proper content of the angel's declaration to the shepherds. Kaituta humin tosameon, herresita prepos, esparga nomenon, kai kemenon en patne. Kai, that's our fifth sentence now, with an and at the start. This really is a linked narrative. You probably wouldn't translate that. Tuto, this. Tosameon is your subject, sign. Human for you. No verb in here. You're missing either an estim or an estai. This is or this will be. A sign for you. Now, I would expect a word like serma for sign. One of my favourite Greek sayings is sorma serma. Body is a sign, which gives a great sense of internal and external relationships. But here we've got sermeion. Serma is not used at all in the New Testament. What we see instead, 77 times, is sermeon, which is an extended version of the word serma. And this is something we see a lot in the New Testament. We see words that are shorter extended. It might be by making it a diminutive. It might be by adding further adjectival type morphemes into it that then make it into an extended noun. There are all kinds of processes that go on that mean that words in the New Testament quite often are longer versions of what you might find elsewhere in Greek. Heoresite brefos. Heoresite is the future of heorisko, which means I find. You will find. You will find a brefos, an infant. Now, brefos is an unusual word. You've got eight of those in the New Testament six of which are Luke Acts. So it's a very Luke Acts way of referring to a small child. And this is very much an infant. It's to brephos. The infant is neuter. In Matthew 2, 9 and 10, you get paideon instead. Little child. But brephos is the word used by Luke. And it seems to be a very specific word the way he does things. And then esparganormenon. This is the swaddled that we had back in verse 7. So relate this back to verse 7. We've got that unusual language, sparganomenon and patne, fatne. A sparganomenon here is the perfect passive participle. In Greek, that tells you that he has been swaddled and he now is swaddled. Back in verse 7, it was aorist. Mary did the action of swaddling him. So here, some people talk about the aspectual difference between this verse and verse 7. In verse 7, she's actively doing the swaddling and the lying him in the manger. And in this verse, it has been done and he is therefore now swaddled. So you will find an infant swaddled and came on lying in a manger. The other thing that people do note about this verse is the lack of articles. No top before brephos, no tear before fatne. There's a distinct indefinacy to some of the language in this verse. You will find a child swaddled and wrapped in a manger. This is all very new to the shepherds and as such cannot be pointed at as a very distinctive thing that they are expecting to find. The fatne, the patne, the manger may be something that's normal for a shepherd to see but to see a child lying in it and to see this particular child is new and is therefore unmarked for definacy in the Greek. And we have a sign from the site of the Nativity in Bethlehem, where the shepherds can go to find that child.